the reciprocity of the geopolitical tennis court has been going on for centuries. And the problem is, if somebody raises the net a little too high, well, one side gets a little pissed off and might do something irrational, like maybe hit you over the head with that political tennis racket. Now, for those of you who are not historically inclined and haven't been around all that long, you might not have heard of the Warsaw Pact. What is the Warsaw Pact? I know a lot of you know about it. But for those who don't know what that is, it was the counter to NATO. When the Cold War started, NATO was formed, okay? NATO was something like kind of mm, anti-Russian, anti-Soviet. Okay, so the philosophy was that if you attack one NATO country, consider yourself attacking all of them, meaning they all have each other's back. So they all come to the defense of the one country. However, Warsaw Pact, kind of the same thing. And so, during the Cold War, the NATO alliance and the Warsaw Pact. So the Warsaw Pact was Russia and all the other Eastern European countries like Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Yugoslav republics, you know, all those that were part of the uh, Soyuz Soviets, or Union of so Soviet Socialist Republics. And so yeah, you had two sides going on there, okay? But then, things were changing, and in 1989, the Berlin Wall came down, Germany was reunified, or unified, reunified, whatever. So what happened was, all of Germany became a member of NATO, and NATO said, okay, this will be the last entry the last member to enter NATO. <clears throat> and the NATO expansion shall not, shall not go any farther east. The Russians said, okay, no problem. So the agreement was no more NATO members, no more expansion of NATO. Russia said, fine. Russia also agreed that now that the Cold War is coming to an end, I think it was, well, early 90s, I forget which year exactly, but after the Russian constitutional crisis and the dissolution or the dissolve of the Soviet Union, there was no more need for Warsaw Pact. So what happened was Russia decided, okay, we will agree to dissolve the Warsaw Pact. The US and all members of NATO said, we shall do the same thing and dissolve NATO. That didn't happen. The Warsaw Pact was dissolved, okay? So what that meant was, and the breakup of the Soviet Union meant that Russia lost half its military might, okay? It also included the Ukraine, yeah. Ukraine was a big portion of the military might of Russia, as well as countries like Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, you know, all the way up and down the, uh, the uh, Eastern Bloc countries. So Russia lost its military, half its military might and the dissolve of the Warsaw Pact, yet NATO was expanding. NATO promised to dissolve if the Warsaw Pact dissolved, but they didn't. And they kept expanding and they kept the door open to new membership. Okay, so where am I going with that? What that meant was, about 15 years ago, Vladimir Putin protested this and said, hey, excuse me, but, you know, uh, there was an agreement and you didn't keep that part of the agreement. So the point being is, this is part of the motives of Vladimir Putin invading the Ukraine, trying to take it back, bring back the mightiness and the glory of the mighty Soviet Union. Yeah. So, you see, I mentioned that the that geopolitical tennis court, okay? The ball bounces both ways, okay? There's two sides to every story. So you probably didn't realize, okay? Uh, is Vladimir Putin the only bad guy involved here? Is he the only bad person? No. He promises were broke, okay? Now, I'm not saying this is a reason for him to go in there, invade the Ukraine, and 
kill innocent civilians. No, I'm not saying it's a good reason for him to do that. No, he shouldn't do that. But you see, this is part of his motives. And a lot of people don't realize that, yeah, hey, there's two sides to every story. And this is the problem. These promises were broke. Now, historically, well, in a way, this is kind of like saying, like, you know, when you look at how the Ukraine used to be part of the Russian uh, Federation of Soviet Socialist Republics, okay, and Vladimir Putin wants it back, in a way, it's kind of like, you know, uh, implying historical imperialism to the postmodern era. It's kind of like saying, oh, Britain wants to invade India, you know, because there used to be British influence imperialism in India. So that's why I'm saying it's like what Putin is doing is kind of equivalent to taking the past imperialistic ways and implying it into postmodern history or postmodern days. So, yes, you shouldn't be doing that. You should just leave them alone. But this is the problem. So, when we look at the historic value of what's going on, let's just start with, oh, no, maybe the ninth century. Okay, so, you know, it's like uh, Prince. Volodymyr of the Kievan Rus goes back to about the 9th century and it all started where the Ukraine is. Okay? This is like the birth of the Slavics. You know, this is the jewel of Russia. This is why Russia wants it back. That's one of the reasons why Vladimir Putin wants Russia back. Okay? There's some historic value to it, plus the fact that, you know, we look at the broken, we look at the broken promises in the past. And he wants to restore the glory of the mighty Soviet Union. Okay. And over the many centuries, there's been a lot of mistrust between Europe and the Slavics. It's gone on and on and on. So yeah, in case you're wondering, what is up with Vladimir Putin? So you see, yeah, he's not the only bad guy, okay? Like I said, NATO made promises and they broke those promises. Now, I'm not saying no, that's a good reason to kill people. No, no, no. But you see, this is what's going on. So now, now you know the rest of the story.